Well, good morning, everybody. I am going to adjust, adjust the camera just a little bit here, working at home and trying to do a couple different things. I think I got it just a little too low. We're going to see if we can get it up and a little bit higher. Uh, so you don't, you don't need to see the floor. Um, it'd probably be all right if you saw the top of my head. So we'll see if I adjusted it correctly, but good morning and welcome. Welcome to everybody. I love to be able uh, to come to you live from wherever we're at. It is certainly nice to um, be where it is safe and warm. Uh, if you're not in Iowa or in the Midwest, you may not know that there has been some icky, uh, I'm going to call it icy, snowy weather. And yesterday and today, the schools are closed. Uh, I might have been able to make it to the store today, but you know what? I don't want you out on, this, on the roads either. So why not take the opportunity to be where we are safe and warm and have the opportunity to be creative? So as always, I love to know where you are watching from. So And, and the only way for me to know um, what is happening um, is for you to put comments in um, so I can see uh, how things are going. So by all means, please feel free. Talk to me um, through the comments. Tell me where you're from, where you're watching from. And uh, this program is going to be a little bit different. Um, I do have our uh, handy dandy clicker. And I have a few products that I'm going to show you. But since um, this isn't our regular uh, weekly live I decided that, and since I'm home, um, I thought I would take a few minutes to introduce myself. And I know that might sound funny, but we have so many people. And good morning, Michelle. I can see somebody is watching. Awesome. Everybody keep commenting and telling me um, that you're uh, watching, that kind of thing. Um, I thought I'd take the opportunity to introduce myself because we know we have so many new customers and maybe you came to Hen and Chick Studio from some other method of, of, you know, finding us that you don't really know much about Hen and Chick Studio. So, uh, again, um, I thought this would be a great, I've got some show and tell sitting off to the side here since I was able to, I'll say, pilfer from my shelves in different places. Um, I've got a few different things, but uh, I am Heidi Kaisen. I am the owner of Head and Chick Studio, and good morning to all of you. We've got uh, Michelle from Iowa, Marla from Missouri, Jerry from Wyoming, Sean from Ohio. I love it. Keep, keep commenting and telling me where you are from. And, oh, warm Florida, Linda. Awesome. We've got all sorts of places. Um, I've owned the store, uh, I, I opened in October of 2011. And so, uh, of course, um, again, the 11 will be 12 years this fall. But I've been doing a lot of other things prior to that, and I thought I would start back a little ways. Because I'm just 29 years old, uh, you know, kind of thing. Haven't been around long, right? Um, so I started quilting and being creative um, at a very young age. Uh, I joined 4-H when I was uh, nine, and so that was really, if you want to say, the beginning of a more formal uh, making of things because we had to do 4-H projects. I'm very, very lucky to have been surrounded by creativity uh, my entire life and with my family um, that we just have so many people in our family that are creative in different ways. Uh, some quilting, you're going to hear a little bit more about my grandma, um, but others that are um, creative in their own way. And I, um, I just want to acknowledge how lucky I am and I, that I know how lucky I am to, to have that in my life and to be surrounded by that. And I think, um, uh, I don't want to get emotional, but I think that there's times when maybe we doubt ourselves about, oh, can we really do that or we really can't? And I've never had doubt um, because I've always been uh, surrounded by people that, of course you can do that. You bet. Give it a try. Worst thing that happens is it doesn't work. 
Doesn't mean that I'm a failure. It just means that that whatever it was failed, right? So there's lots of really good things. And good morning. I see Jamie is on this morning too. So love it, love it. And um, so uh, my grandmother, this would be my maternal grandmother, uh, Maureen Moore. And I did just see one thing I want to grab. Hang on. I'm coming right back. I looked over here and I forgot to grab this out of the cabinet in my sewing room. Um, yeah, I, I am in the sewing room and I did not clean for you. Uh, so yes, I have piles. Um, that's just part of um, the way it is around here because we're being creative. It's part of a creative mess. And oh, by all means, I take time and clean up and do those kinds of things. But at the same time, we're always in the midst of uh, something. So I grew up in um, Northwood would be the most, the years I spent, you know, the most years of my childhood were in Northwood, Iowa. That's where I graduated from high school. So if you know anybody buddy from Northwood Kensett um, High School, that's where I graduated. But my family is really from St. Ansgar, Iowa, which is just 18 miles to the east of Northwood. Uh, my mother graduated from Carpenter, um, a little town that's part of the St. Ansgar School District. And my dad actually graduated from St. Ansgar. So both of their families um, were um, all in the St. Ansgar area growing up. So I had a very strong family uh, ties uh, to St. Ansgar. My folks moved back to St. Ansgar while I was in college. And so they've been in St. Ansgar way longer than we lived anywhere else. So St. Ansgar is um, really home. Uh, and uh, if you're from St. Ansgar, I I'll say you're from the area, sometimes we slur it together a little bit. But um, <laughs> anyway, uh, my, I'm very blessed to have um, so much family there. And, you know, the kind of, uh, I will say the kind of community that we had was that uh, I'm going to say from where my folks live, which is the house my grandmother lived in. So that's the house I went to when I went to go see my grandma. Um, uh, you would go out the front door and to the left and my dad's sister lives there. And, um, and you went out the back door through the alley and my mom's oldest sister lived there for many years. Now she lives across the town, across town kind of thing. And um, it just is the kind of, I'll say we are the kind of family that, it's not unusual for everybody to just to pop into each other's houses. And so lots of stories, um, you know, for grandma uh, to be able to just have her family around her. And so that was wonderful. But we grew up, I was the youngest of seven cousins. Um, my grandmother had three daughters and those three daughters have seven children between them. I'm the youngest of them. And, uh, you know, just close knit, seven years between the oldest, Chris and I, and my cousin, Anne, um, if you uh, know me at all, know that she's like my big sister. And um, still to this day, we, um, it is, it's like, I'm, I'm her little sister. She's my big sister. So I love it. Uh, and we grew up not having everything um, in physical um, kinds of ways. But we had everything when it came to love and to understanding the port and importance of helping others and doing different things. And my grandmother was definitely at the um, helm of teaching us those kinds of um, wonderful qualities and stuff. She made quilts, and that's what I'm holding at the moment, is uh, she, she quilted, she quilted crafted, she cross-stitched, um, she did all sorts of things in her life. Uh, she's been gone since 2001. Um, prior to her dying, I did start um, photographing all of the quilts that she made. And so I have 167 um, quilts photographed. Um, and oh my gosh, the, the stories I could tell about this process of doing this um, grandma is very, and was very humble. Um, and, uh, for example, one of the things that the more I got into quilting, I realized that it was a little bit unique that, uh, grandma stitched everything by hand, never used a rotary cutter. Cause I don't think rotary cutters were even around when she started. Um, 
She did have a sewing machine that she was given at some point, but she chose not um, to use it. She preferred stitching by hand. And if there's something I could tell you today, I'm, hopefully maybe I'll drop lots of little nuggets here, is that um, as wonderful as some of the tools are that we use, I will be the first to tell you that you can create whatever you want very, very simply. So don't ever get overwhelmed by, oh, do I have to know that technique or do I have to have that tool? No, you don't. And this is proof of that, is that she made bed size quilts. She made wall quilts. Um, she did applique. She did um, baby quilts, Christmas quilts. I'm just flipping through um, uh, all of them here just very, very quickly. But she, uh, you know, she made everything she needed to make. Um, that meant something to all of us um, with simply a needle, a thread, um, scissors, a ruler, um, that kind of thing. And so certainly um, uh, something. And so one of the things, who taught you to quilt? I would love to know how you learned to quilt because I do think that um, it is fun to understand whether you're learning from somebody else. And uh, we got quilts for Christmas, birthdays, weddings, um, whatever grandma felt. Uh, very rarely did we ever, um, I'll say, direct her as to what to quilt. She uh, made what she wanted to and simply um, gave it to us. And, and I treasure all of those things. And I've got a couple of quilts in my pile here um, to show you. Um, so that is is something that um, I want you to understand that it's just uh, it's so important to have those those treasures. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that I do have to tell you that that she didn't we never marked our quilts as far as um, who, when we made them, uh, who made them, that kind of thing. And that was one thing that as I became um, uh, very involved in the American Quilt Study Group uh, back in the in several years ago uh, was that having some kind of documentation was important. So even if it was simply a name and a year, uh, that that was critical um, on the quilts. And grandma was a bit overwhelmed because of course she had 167 quilts that we were asking her, that I was asking her to somehow date. And so at some point she embroidered on them. Um, sometimes she used a, a Pigma pen. Somebody made her some labels so that it that said Maureen Moore. Um, all sorts of things like that. So to me, those um, kinds of, uh, that's just important, even if it's simple. I wanted to photograph them so that I have record because, of course, I don't have them all. Um, all of our family has them. She has given them to everybody. And um, one of the funny things was, and I probably could have dug a little farther and found the actual notebook, but um, I wanted two things. One, I wanted in her words what was important about some of those quilts. And number two, I wanted her handwriting because there's also something I think magical um, when you open something up and you see somebody's uh, handwriting and that somebody you knew that um, uh, to be able to know more about it. And um, so I gave her this very pretty notebook that had a quilt on the cover and lined pages inside thinking it would be perfect for her to um, to write down. So I had all the images uh, numbered and um, uh, and so she could write number one and then write what she thought about or anything she remembered about that quilt, that kind of thing. And uh, several months later, I said, Grandma, how is that going? And, and she pulls out this notebook and there's all these pieces of paper sticking out of it. And I open it up and it is like um, her handwriting is all on the St. Ansgar State Bank free notepad. And I said, oh, Grandma, you didn't write in the book. And she's like, oh, the book was too pretty. I didn't want to, didn't want to write in it. And so, you know, if you want to say, now I have a collection of St. Ansgar State Bank um, notepad um, with Grandma's handwriting on it. Um, and it just it makes me chuckle every time just because... That was grandma. Um, she didn't want to, um, you know, I want to say make, you know, not use that book or whatever. Anyway, so um, it's just kind of a little side note there. But that, um, so for me, 
growing up, of course, because of 4-H, and I was a 10-year 4-H member, I was always doing some kind of crafty project. I did macrame. I did quilling. Um, I, of course, I baked. I did um, home, um, like wood, uh, wood refinishing projects. I did clothing sewing projects, and of course, I did quilting. I made my first full-size quilt by hand and tied it um, by the time I was a sophomore in high school. And it's so interesting for me to say that now um, because Goldie and Virginia, uh, our twin daughters, they're sophomores in high school. They have so far out sewn me. Um, that I, I just couldn't be prouder of them. They have made so many more quilts um, than I uh, probably ever have um, by the time they're sophomores in high school. And I love that, that they're constantly, um, you know, making and creating. And as I always tell them, just keep making quilts. And we've got a whole stack of quilts over here um, that need to be quilted and bound and given away. Um, because um, there's just always somebody that does not have a quilt um, to keep them warm. And so definitely want to do that. And I love, I'm seeing a couple stories pop up. Please um, keep telling us um, your um, how, you, how you learn to quilt, all of that kind of stuff. So um, a little bit more about me. Uh, the, you know, growing up, um, I, of course, I had an interest in food as well. My grandmother, the same one who taught me to quilt, thought I should be a dietitian in a nursing home. Now at 17, as I always like to say, that doesn't sound very appealing. Um, I could tell you today um, that I probably really would have enjoyed that because of course I love the people and I love helping people. Um, so the, the dietitian route would have um, been, uh, would have been a good one for me kind of thing if I had eventually gone down that. Um, but uh, instead, I went with a little um, uh, jazzier, uh, I'll say, degree. I got a degree in consumer food science, food nutrition uh, from, the or from Iowa State University and uh, graduated there uh, in 1990 with the idea that I would um, develop recipes for cookbooks. Uh, and so uh, my degree is very much in line with a dietitian until the end um, of our, our years. So I have some good friends that are dietitians and, and uh, I know, again, I, I enjoy seeing what they're doing. So I know um, it was still a good field for me. At, at that time, if you want to say in the late 80s, if anybody had suggested to me that I could have had a career in quilting, I think we all would have been like, oh, that's nice, but you know, is that really going to be long term? Um, you know, today, totally different um, when it comes to that. But I, um, anyway, graduated from uh, Iowa State in 1990 and um, had the lovely opportunity to be a, an editor in the book group at Better Homes and Gardens. So if you have the red plaid cookbook, does anybody have the red plaid cookbook in uh, on your kitchen shelf? Um, that is the department that I worked in. Uh, so I do have my name with my maiden name, which is McNutt, um, if you have not heard that before. So Heidi McNutt um, would be um, in a few cookbooks from the early 1990s. Um, I probably could, again, dig those out if I wanted to. But, um, you know, it was, it was an interesting time being at Meredith Corporation, which is the Meredith Corporation was the parent company at that time. They've now sold to Dot Dash, um, so they're, it's a different, um, totally different company at this point. But, um, uh, you know, Meredith was, was changing um, even back then in the way they did books, that kind of thing. So I was um, young, obviously, I'd only been there uh, about two years when a major... Um, employee cut, staff cut came. And uh, as I always like to say, I was actually in the wrong place at the right time um, because out of the 25, uh, 30 people that lost their jobs that day, I was fortunate enough um, to keep mine. And it made um, a, a huge transition at that point because in the process, they also had cut basically the craft department yet they still had books to be edited. So um, 
pretty soon somebody comes and says, do any of you know cross stitch? And uh, I'm like, yeah, I've been doing it for years. So my very first craft title to edit was a Vanessa Ann um, cross stitch book. And if you um, follow, did any cross stitching with Vanessa Ann, um, that is Joe Packham. And today, Joe Packham is the editor in chief, I believe is her title, of a whole series of fabulous, I'm going to call them magazines, but they're more like books, um, called Where Women Create. Um, Joe was actually at our fifth um, anniversary at Head and Chick Studio several years ago. So, you, some of you um, that have been around with us for a while might have had the opportunity to have had Joe. But anyway, that was my first book into, into cr the craft area. I did some dry floral arrangements, uh, some very interesting uh, things about that. So glad we do quilts. And needless to say, I was again in the right place at the right time and um, got, the, got to be the editor for the very first issue of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine. And April 1993 was the first issue of American Patchwork and Quilting from Better Homes and Gardens. And they are celebrating their 30th um, anniversary uh, this April. And how exciting um, that I, I, technically the first three issues, um, I was sort of behind the scenes doing everything. And then, um, I, I can't remember now if it was issue four, or issue five, then they officially put me on um, the, the editor's page. But I did work on that very first issue with Marty Michelle's, um, oh my gosh, no, I'm not going to say the name of the pattern. It had the heart, Storm at Sea, Storm at Sea with, um, and it created a heart on it. So any of you have been around long enough um, to know that, uh, that certainly um, was a, a, a great um, issue. Anyway, I do believe I have every issue of, um, that, I, that I edited. Um, and we had the opportunity to create great products like the calendar, quilt sampler, um, quilts and more, uh, the complete guide to quilting, also an awesome book. Um, anyway, so uh, had 17 plus years at Meredith Corporation uh, before I left there. So um, I could tell you all sorts of stories about my years at, at Meredith um, with American Patchwork and Quilting. But lifelong friends that I met um, uh, through through that, and just love love all of those connections. The people, no matter what job I've been in or where I've been, the people uh, are the most important thing. And I would say that's still true at Hen and Schick Studio. Is that you, um, all of you who watch, and and whether you're um, just following us or whether you are, you know, a customer that walks in. I love all of the people and the stories. So, okay, so um, after Meredith, um, the reason I left Meredith um, was at that point, um, I'd already been commuting for two years with Henry, and then the girls had come along. And with three kids, I could not um, commute from our home here, which is 75 miles um, from Des Moines, one way, that's one way. And uh, so I took a job at that point with APQS, and imagine my life, if you can imagine, that I've gone from APQ to APQS, and I'll tell you another acronym in there. Um, APQS is the Long Arm Quilting Company out of Carroll, Iowa. And uh, we do have an um, APQS machine in the store that we rent out, So, if, and that's why we do have that. I believe in their machines fully. So I was their national sales manager for seven years. So many things again about this opportunity that I could tell you in in the 17 years that I've been at Meredith, you know, we really focused on how to create instructions that when you sat down to work on your quilt and you have free time, you want those instructions to be well written, easy to understand and um, so that you have success. The last thing you want to do is on a snowy day, hey, I'm home from work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, make a project. And I get so confused by the instructions that I can't move forward. So at, at, Hen or at APQ, um, that was really our goal and, and is one of the reasons why I am adamant about the instructions uh, that in the, of the patterns that we have at um, Hen and Chick Studio is 
There's nothing worse than sending a customer out the door and going, oh, good luck with that pattern, right? We can't do that. That's not us. So um, uh, at APQS, I was the national sales manager. And instead of focusing on the instructions, of course, we were focusing on the finishing. Oh, I learned so much from so many people like Marilyn Badger and Karen McTavish and Myrna Ficken and um, uh, Joanne Hoffman. And I've got something to show in a little bit of, from Joanne. Um, and, you know what I mean? So many things that... that um, that finishing is a whole different part of um, the quilting world, but it's also so rewarding to finish your quilts. And again, this is why we have a long arm and we rent it out at Hen and Chick Studio, is that, is that a quilt top is wonderful and the process you go through to get that is great, but being able to finish it um, and to be able to complete it, hang it up, use it, give it away, whatever that is, is equally important. So that was um, very fun for me. So I would love to know uh, another question here for you to answer in um, the, the comments is, are you just making tops um, or are you sending those tops out to a professional at least to get them done? Or are you stacking them up? How are you finishing your quilts? Because I think that is so important um, because I, there's something about then you, you feel good and you move on to that next project and um, it's wonderful. Now, not all projects get finished in the same way. I have a few of those and, uh, you know, some that take longer than others. But um, anyway, so that is uh, APQS. While I was at APQS, it did become um, even more clear to me, though, that traveling and being away from the three kids uh, was difficult. So, you know, what's the next logical step? Well, I'd been holding some retreats um, during my time at APQS, and I had vowed in um, 2010, because I had done some in 2008 and 9, that in 2010, I would not hold any retreats until I found a permanent location that I could call mine. And why? Why are retreats important? And this is back to, to the people and to the community. Um, we need, we need each other. And we need to be able to share what we love about quilting with others. And whether you are with your friends and you're quilting or you come together in a group of people maybe you didn't know, the, the common bond of creating is, is the first step to, um, I, I'm going to just say happiness, right? And whether, whether you're, you're scrapbooking, whether you're quilting, whether you're knitting, whatever it is that you like to create, doing photography, all sorts of things that we could put into that category, um, that then... We, um, I, I just find it so important that we are together. And so again, that was actually my, my first, I was looking for a facility that I could hold, um, have a retreat center and hold retreats. And again, one thing led to another, and that's where, how I ended up in Conrad, because the other factor, um, that was important to me was that I was, um, available for our family. And if, if you haven't ever been to Conrad, um, Conrad's a town of about 1,100 people. The high school um, is, I don't know, five blocks from the store. And I guess maybe we'll say the elementary is seven blocks because it's just a little farther to the north. Um, uh, those things were really important to me as Henry and Golding, Virginia were young. And, you know, I so envisioned... Um, you know, these years that would go so slow and they would be in the elementary school and then they would be in the middle school and then they would be in the high school and it would last forever, right? Well, you know how that goes. Henry has graduated and, um, and the girls are sophomores in high school, but I wouldn't change a thing about the availability um, that we have been to them and the, them being able to come into the store after school and those kinds of things. Um, uh, even, even now they come after school, um, uh, in between things. So love, um, love that. Um, okay. So, and then obviously in 2011, I opened Hen and Chick Studio. 
Now, you have to also know that I do have a second business on the side, um, if you want to call it on the side, um, because I, I feel that it is my purpose um, here to, to help people. And to uh, the quote I love to use is that I would rather be a river than a reservoir. And that's John Maxwell. And if you have not ever heard um, that particular um, quote, to me, it just means that if there's something that I have that would help you, I want you to have it, right? Um, I'm not going to hold it up and keep it up inside of me, um, hoping that that it does something for me because guess what? It, you know, the only way I'm, I'm going to benefit from it is if I share that. And so I, um, in 2015, I purchased a trade publication. At that point, it was called American Quilt Retailer. So I've gone from APQ, APQS to AQR. And uh, in October of this past year, I was able to get the trademark for Creative Retailer. Because again, we're trying to encompass multiple businesses, but our whole purpose there is to help guide small businesses to success. So we put together articles um, so that if you are a, um, if you're a long armor, if you're a small business owner of any type, there's articles on social media, business, all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, and it's not on the newsstands. You have to be a subscriber to get it, all of that kind of stuff. So. Uh, anyway, I love people are adding in how they are finishing their quilts, and I love that. Okay, so um, uh, I have no problem filling the time, right? So this is good. So in my years at um, a APQ, um, I, of course, was completely quilt-oriented. And then there came that day when the scrapbooking department was going to have a workshop. And... You know, there's always that part of you like, oh, I've got so much work to do. Do I really have to go to a scrapbooking event? And we're sitting at the scrapbooking event and AccuCut um, was there to show us how to uh, use their machine to cut paper shapes. And as the lady is rattling off that this will cut, you know, 50 different types of material, she says, wool. And I'm like, it cuts wool? And at that point, felted wool was just starting to enter into the market. And this is pre-kids, so and does it have a year on it? Hold on. Maybe it has a year on it. Uh, no, it does not. I did not put a year on it. Um, so we're talking, at, you know, Henry's going to be 19, so we're talking a good solid 20 plus years ago. And felted wool was just starting to hit the market. We had very, very few colors, that kind of thing. But boy, oh boy, did that get my attention. And they definitely let us get a die cut machine and some dies. And so uh, I immediately started cutting out shapes and uh, doing some wool applique. Because if you haven't worked with felted wool um, before, um, and not, I'm not talking about felt, I'm talking about wool that has been felted, which means that the wool has been washed and dried in a way that it's been felted um, and it means that the edges will not ravel okay so um so i cut out the shapes started doing some very very simple embroidery it, um, over the lunch hour i loved it that some of my cohorts um would sit down and they're like well let me try so uh, mary irish um if you happen to be watching did this block um heidi pelkovic um uh that's so we had two heidi's in the department Hers has H2 on it. And I think Nancy, hold on. Yep, Nancy Wyatt, she was in the, oh, she did yarn and all sorts of things. She did a block. And we just had fun um, chatting about, um, you know, the stitching and that kind of thing. And I used a fabric on the back that has chickens in the window, if you can't possibly see that. But that was my beginning into wool. Uh, I... I think I like wool applique so much because of the handwork. And um, that's, again, that's how I grew up. It's back to what grandma did. It was always with the hands. Love the portability of it. I love being able to, you know, um, pick it up, set it down, pick it up, set it down, because that happens a lot around here. So I'm going to start showing a few quilts. So that was um, one of the very first wool quilts I did. Uh, as part of the, the book Quilt Lover's Favorites, 
we, um, Quilt Lover's favorite, took a project that had been in uh, American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine, and then we reconfigured it. And Janet Brandt was probably one of the very first wool applique artists that we started working with, and her work, phenomenal. If you, uh, uh, she does does just dimensional uh, wool and applique things are just unbelievable, unbelievable. She is just um, out of this world. And, um, but she did a project white on white. So it was white wool on type of, on top of white wool and used pink embroidery thread and did a project called I Love You. And it was a very small, um, but it had a hand. It had these shapes and stuff. So I took all of the shapes from her applique and I started to make this for my grandma. Um, I had never made anything for grandma. And so the three hands in the middle are for um, my her three daughters. And at the time of her death and the time I was making this, um, uh, she had the seven grandchildren and 13 great grandchildren. And so that's what the 20 hands on the outside were for. So I enjoyed um, making it. She did not know I was making it for her and she did not see it in person, but I know she knows that I um, made it for her. And so every time I look at it, of course, it's a nice reminiscence of, um, of my grandma. And, um, and I keep seeing people come on. Great. I love it. Keep telling me where you're from and oh, Minerva, I love that you're so in there. Gotta stop and look. I love it. People are telling me how they're quilting. Okay. So as, um, as I got more and more comfortable with the die cut machine, um, we started playing around. I was inspired by a project from Bonnie Sullivan. She had a pull toy um, quilt, and uh, I decided that I didn't want to cut out all the shapes myself, so I used the die cut machine and cut out these shapes. This is a quilt I made for Henry um, uh, using the die cut machine. Okay. And then when the girls uh, were coming along, uh, I made, was it upside down? No, it's right side. So um, again, different die cuts and uh, um, did, this is wool applique on top of cotton. And their names are quilted in um, to the quilt as well. And I love it, Lindsay, you're coming from Chicago. I love it. Uh, that's wonderful. I love that you guys are all hanging in there. So I, I do want to just, uh, I'll take a quick break here before I show you a couple quilts. And I want to show you my favorite needles. Let's see if they come up here. Um, and they are, there we go. The gold eye embroidery needles. They're one of my favorites. There they come up. And um, sitting right here is a little travel lamp that I uh, use a lot. Um, it sits flat on the table, but it also has a clamp and then the neck is very movable and it has different um, brightnesses. And so it is something that I use and it uh, is a USB port um, for um, charging and it works well. So like if I'm here in my, at my table doing some, even if it's my reading or doodling, um, I have all, um, that's a great little tool to have. And um, let's see, there were a couple other things I was going to throw up. Uh, I have a variety of scissors. Um, right now we have two different uh, things. We have the Super Snip um, mini scissors, which are wonderful. Uh, and of course we have other scissors. I was looking for, there's the big piece, but I usually stick with something small. Um, this is Terry Atkinson's um, stowaway bag pattern. And, um, the girls have made dozens of these. So I have dozens, but this little particular pig um, is my traveling um, uh, piece that I have my um, gold eye needles in here, my thread. I do have a seam ripper and a little pair of scissors that I keep um, with me in a little box um, with some pins in it so they're not floating all around. And that always travels with me when I'm, um, when I'm out and about. And yesterday, um, I gotta look where I put it. Yesterday on um, our live Zoom, which we're gonna have another Zoom today at five o'clock. And so uh, that uh, is uh, 
an opportunity for you to join us and to uh, share something from your sewing room. But I was talking about the fact that I'm currently working on a Suzani. And uh, I loved it that Jan, and you're on again this morning, gave me some additional um, history about the area where the Suzani's uh, can be made in like Central Asia, that kind of thing. But it is a, an embroidered quilt. And so I have, um, because we do travel a fair amount with the volleyball team, I'm always wanting to do some type of handwork. And I finally got my uh, Cinnamon Stitches applique done that I'd kit I bought in 1995 and I took it uh, last April to the my Amish hand quilter so that she could hand quilt it and we're picking it up March 31st so super excited about that but I am this is one piece of my Suzani and it I cut out all the wool on a Sizzix die cut and um, I've stitched everything down once and then I'm going back and starting to do some additional embroidery um, on the pieces so that it will be um, embroidered and of course at some point quilted. I'm doing all of the wool applique on flannel. So um, knowing that this is gonna be a big quilt, I knew it would get really heavy if it was on um, wool, but I didn't want just straight cotton. So I love this orange piece of wool. Um, so anyway, so that's just one section of my Suzani. So it'll take several years I have no um, problem ma imagining that I will be taking it um, well beyond the volleyball games to some other place to get um, get stitched. And if you want to see what that, um, I didn't, didn't grab, I thought it was in there. So to just to give you, I first cut it out um, on paper. So this was sort of my paper pattern. And then I made a copy of that. So my Suzani would look like this. Um, when I get all done and again, like what I was just showing you is one corner, um, of that quilt. So I love having, um, handwork. So I just take my, my trusty bag, um, with my stuff and, um, have that with when we're, when we're traveling and doing, um, volleyball and so that I can have something to do. Okay. So, um, if you like embroidery, I did want to, um, come back and we showed these, several weeks ago, but if you're thinking, oh my gosh, Heidi does a ton of wool and embroidery. I don't even know where to start. I, what I love about embroidery also is that it starts with simple stitches and it's how you combine the stitches to make something more um, difficult looking, I'm going to say. And so we have um, several kits, embroidery kits in from Rosanna Diggs that are great, great places um, to start. And I love the fact that they all um, look like quilt blocks. So those are four embroidery kits and literally everything you need is in there, including a wonderful book um, with a little booklet, I should maybe call it, with instructions on how to do the stitches and something that you will be able to take to the next project that you do. Um, if you like um, a little bit more and want a little bit more in your applique and your wool, we also carry quite a few of Granny's Legacy um, patterns. And um, so we've got several of those to show you that you can um, find on our website as well. And um, we even have some free embroidery stitches. Maybe Jamie can grab that for you, a link to that that if you're wanting um, just to have some embroidery stitches, uh, you know, written out, you can certainly do that. But these are all um, different wool kits that we have from Granny's Legacy. And what, again, what I like about this, about Granny's Legacy, is everything you need is going to be in that kit. So often with wool, you only need a small piece. But if you come to our store and you have to buy the yardage, you know, you're looking at, I'm going to say eight to $10 for just a small piece of wool. And maybe you only need a couple of inches. So the wool kits are an awesome buy. Um, especially if you're not wanting to stock up on wool, but simply want to be able to do some projects, you're going to find that those are, um, a, a very, very good price with everything in them. If there's beads on it, the beads are in there, all that kind of stuff. You just have to add thread. And, um, of course, we have um, uh, DMC floss 
um, available, but use whatever you have. It's okay. If you're a uh, cross stitcher from years ago, pull out that cross stitch, you know, same DMC cloth and use some of that. Um, we do have a hand embroidery stitches book. Uh, I see the image did not pop up there, but um, it is a great book also that we have um, where you can have a bunch of stitches to look at because sometimes it's nice to be able to read how to do a stitch as well as how to, um, and a visual, a diagram to show you how to do it. And good morning, Susan. Nice to see you. And Deb, thank you for your, um, wow, I love it. Okay, so since I'm home, okay, I'm going to save these. I'll save those for a second. Um, since I'm home, I did grab two quilts of grandma's. And I know I'm really close to the, the camera, so you're not going to be able to see the whole thing. But she loved log cabins, and um, we had the opportunity at one point to get a bunch of plaids, and uh, uh, Grandma cut everything with a, with a, by pulling her threads and straight. So all of these plaids are nice and straight, if you can't tell. And I love this particular quilt. Sometimes I have it hanging in the dining room. Um, right now I do not, but um, it is, maybe I'll, maybe I'll change out the quilt that's uh, up in the dining room right now. Um, so anyway, I wanted to just show you just a little bit of one quilt that I have from her. And um, the same Amish woman, Wilma, that I have quilting my quilt at the moment, and I'll lay this out over here, um, uh, quilted 76 of my grandmother's quilt. When, um, when we went to pick up one of the last ones that that she had quilted for my grandma, um, uh, Wilma had pulled out her records and had checked that. And at this point, Wilma's quilted at least a dozen for me, so I love that. Hey, Goldie in Virginia, I was like, I need a glass of water. Does anybody want to grab one? Otherwise, I might have to take a camera break, right? I forgot to grab my water that's usually sitting here. So we'll see, they're in virtual school, so they might not be able to help me. Um, uh, then one other project I pulled out, and again, I won't be able to show you the, uh, the whole thing again because of the angle of where I'm at, but it is an English flower garden, um, a little bit different than what you traditionally see because it's got the orange background. And if you can get up close at all, uh, my grandmother, this is one of the few that we know she hand stitched herself. I mean, I mean, hand quilted and, um, and she quilted it in black thread. I love that about this. And um, I don't know if I can show you again very easily, but she used Rick Rack um, for the binding. And I love that. Love, love, love um, that particular piece. And so this one has, if I find the right corner. Hey, Virginia or Goldie? Yeah. I can't see. Can you grab a glass of water for mom? Thank you. Um, I'm looking for the year that she had stitched on it. Here we go. And this one, she'd actually embroidered um, on it. So it says M. Moore 1971. If you can see that there. Okay, so there is another um, quilt. And, um, okay, so uh, if you have questions that I am not um, uh, answering, please um, let me know. And thank you so much, Virginia. There you go. I couldn't tell who was walking by. All right, had to have a drink of water. Hang on. And Minerva, thank you so much for uh, saying that Grandma was a special lady. You had the opportunity to know her, and I'm sure she would say the same thing about you because um, you are also um, very special with all of the quilts that you are busy making. If you don't know Minerva, Join our creative community, and you'll see Minerva posting um, uh, quite often the quilts that she's finishing, and she's working very, very hard in her sewing room, um, and I love it. I love seeing uh, all of the creativity that Minerva is doing, so keep up all that sewing, because I know you have a little more snow to the north of us up there. Okay, um... Oh, uh, Melva wants to know how the Rick Rack binding was applied. Well, from best that I can tell you, and knowing how Grandma stitched, would have been that she would have um, folded the top over and have stitched it to the top and then folded the back under and have closed it shut by hand. 
Um, and to me, that's the, the best way to, I think, to describe how she did it, um, just simply because she did not do it on the machine. It was all done by hand. Um, so that she would have stitched through that rickrack or, or stitched um, to it, I should maybe say, rather than through it. So, yeah, certainly um, not. Today I would simply have stitched it probably by machine and then um, flipped over the, the back and tried to stitch it again. But I don't know that she um, chose to do that. Okay, so um, again, uh, I have a lot of creative interests. You know, back when I was telling you the story about going to this scrapbooking event, um, I was not, um, at that point, um, uh, not really, I'm going to say doing scrapbooking. Of course, you could call 4-H scrapbooking because we did those, our, our books every year. But it, as the kids came along, I became more interested also in documentation. If you want to put up, taking photos and documenting what they were doing. Uh, so I definitely have gotten into scrapbooking. I do a ton of digital work. Um, uh, I'm currently doing, I'm currently doing Allie Edwards, one little word program. And so I do some digital, um, scrapbooking. Uh, I did also do some hand stitching and I can tell you this is from one of my doodles. And then, um, I added words I can show you. So I do uh, digital scrapbooking as well, collecting poems. My word of the year is intentional. And Goldie and I worked on this last night. Um, and so, again, I include handwriting because, as I told you earlier, I love that part of it. Um, so there's different things in here. My, the photography is an important part for me. Uh, there is something about capturing that moment and being able to look back. Um, and so, of course, I'm always doing volleyball. Um, my family, uh, trying to take pictures of them. Uh, this is my manifesto. So I took a photograph of that stitchery and then digitally added words. Um, again, always looking for photos that capture the fun that Goldie and Virginia are having. Um, or maybe it's the companion that I sometimes have. And if I could, if I could turn the camera, well, should I try? Hold on. Don't get dizzy. see her down there? Yes, there she is. Okay, I'm coming back. Don't want to disturb her. Okay, we'll see if we can get the film back. So sorry. Hopefully I didn't make anybody dizzy. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's Henry's dog, Lucy, and she likes to join us um, in the sewing room and different things. But um, this particular night, she was sleeping literally on my tennis shoes. Um, which, of course, I thought was hilarious. And I also incorporate um, many of my um, doodles. This particular one, I was playing around with color. Um, so uh, I like to do that. And um, creativity also. Um, well, let's see. I do, I do a ton of um, doodles. I have books full of doodles. So every morning I uh, do um, in my devotions, uh, as I, uh, I'll say, sit upon a particular verse, I then could, um, I draw and doodle and whatever size book I have, I um, doodle in. This is the current one I'm doodling in. Uh, so I use up uh, books. Here's today's doodle. So I'm always doing something like that. Um, I also like to include my photography in a variety of ways. You just saw it in my scrapbook. Um, but I also uh, enjoy using it in quilts. Uh, my One of my very first endeavors with um, including, incorporating uh, photos into quilts. And again, I apologize. I'm going to just adjust just a little bit here and make sure we don't. If you saw how my photo, my camera was standing up, you would, of course, chuckle. Um, I did a a photo quilt of the Great Iowa Tractor Ride that Jeff and I participated in for quite a few years. But the, these are some of my favorites um, of incorporating photos. And let's see if I can. This is Henry, and that is his calf, Megan. 
um, who is now a cow and still out in the field, I believe. I don't believe she's um, given up yet of having calves. And I took the photograph and then I worked with Joanne Hoffman um, in South Dakota and sent it to her. She, um, it's printed on silk. And then the photo is, I used spoon flour, if you've never used that service before. And um, then I took, she took the photo and applicated it to a fabric and then quilted it. So there's um, sheep quilted in on the top and the bottom. Uh, his name is over here. If you can't see it, it's right, um, Henry, right there. Uh, somewhere there's like his initials. Yep, right here. I can see it. I'm trying to look at it from the back. Um, here are his initials, H, J, K. And um, if if you don't, if you do not know what this photo represents, um, then you, you weren't a 4-H'er that had calves and breaking them to lead by pulling them behind, walking them behind a, um, uh, in this particular case, a hay rack. And so um, just a regular part of... Um, uh, the 4-H years. And so um, the, the red plaid shirt, um, I do have to tell you the story of that. I can tell you what year this was. It was 2010 because um, that summer, my friend from Norway sent her um, oldest daughter and a friend to spend the summer with us, uh, just like she had in 1986. And one day I had to work in Des Moines. So I took uh, Marie and Marta and the three kids to Jordan Creek Mall, gave them all 20 bucks to spend on whatever they wanted. I said, I don't, you know, whatever they wanted to spend. And Henry um, uh, found this red plaid shirt um, and that he wanted uh, to look like his dad um, in a plaid shirt. And so he wore that so proudly um, as he was doing his 4-H um, thing that particular summer. And it was very heartwarming. So, and then, um, so of course I needed to do that with the girls and I dropped them here. So excuse me. And it's actually the same photograph. So I'm going to just hold one up at the moment and I'll show you what's different. But on the very first day that Henry went, um, uh, to kindergarten and had to ride the bus, uh, or one of that, one of those very first days, I won't say it's the exactly the first day, but we were walking Henry up our driveway to the end of the driveway where the bus would pick him up. And we took the little red wagon um, full of garbage up to the dumpster. And on the way back to the house, this was Goldie and Virginia and the light was just beautiful coming in. And I snapped this shot of them wearing their blue plaid um, shirt, uh, uh, jackets Anyway, and I just love that image. And, and again, the representation for me was that I was home with them. And my job at that point allowed me the flexibility um, to walk Henry up to the driveway. And um, it was what I needed at that moment and um, was so important um, to me. And so anyway, we had did these quilts. And in each of them, there is a frog um, because Joanne thought that at some point, They'll need to find their Prince Charming, kiss their frog, and turn him into their prince. And so that is on here. I'm trying to see if I can see it. Hold on. i to see if I can see the frog. And their, oh, here's the frog right down here. There's the frog. And the names are in here as well. And I have to look a little more closely because I can't remember exactly where they were their names are. Isn't that funny that you can't see if I can see it on this one because they're not exactly the same place. So um, anyway, but both of their names are in here as well. If I, if I searched far enough, oh, there's the frog. I can see the frog. He's down here in this one. So um, each of the girls has one of um, those quilts as well. I'd love to do more things like that. Um, and certainly glad that I know people. Uh, Joanne Hoffman is an award-winning uh, long armor as well that I got to work with at APQS um, and has done many, many beautiful quilts and has patterns and all of that. So I have had no problem filling an hour of telling you a little bit more about me and sharing a little bit of my world with you. I hope um, that you have enjoyed it thoroughly. 
Um, and uh, if you have other questions um, that, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, oh, and Susan, you're so sweet to say that I should try my hand at fabric design. Actually did try that. Um, didn't, uh, didn't, um, uh, didn't work. But uh, as I like to say, as I said earlier, um, the idea failed, but I, I certainly don't think of it as a failure for me. Um, uh, just it wasn't the right time and it's okay. There's so many different things. I'd love to play with fabric. I think that's the biggest part that I enjoy. So anyway, well, I hope that you've, again, that you've had a great time today, that you maybe have learned a few things about me, um, understand maybe a little bit more uh, about why we do some things at Hen and Chick Studio. Because at the end of the day, what is most important is you. And I love being able to help you be creative. And I love to be able to see you and see your quilts. That's what I like about the creative community is that there's so many things um, that, uh, that are just great. And people are doing such wonderful things, more than I can even imagine. And I love it that you're able to share that. So if you have not joined us in our creative community, be sure to do that. And if you are a member head on over there and show us something that you've been making recently. Whether it's done or in process, we'd love to see where you are and, and what you're doing today. So everybody, the store will be open tomorrow, Friday. Um, but again, if you have time later this afternoon at five o'clock, we are going to have a Zoom. Uh, just, just share for a little bit. Um, um, we'll see what progress the girls make on their project today and see what progress I make. So everybody have a great day and we'll talk to you later.